The show with Dan and Joe. This is episode two. This is episode three. This is episode four. This is episode five. Get a pen out, pour heavy. In the layout, on a Eddie. I got three of those, run the valley. In New Dios, not for belly. Stay that money, I for Perry. I shoot droppers, call me Larry. Then they ain't Yonkers, I need a Navy. Don't need a sponsor, hurry to heaven. All right, guys, man, so we're at the All-Star game right now, and none of this will be possible without Clean Fuego, so thank you guys so much for helping us out. I just want to do a quick little ad where tell you guys what Clean Fuego is about. Clean Fuego is an elite pitching training tool used by some of the biggest pros in the game. The big thing is it works on your spin efficiency, which is huge as a pitcher. A ton of pro guys use it, so you know it's certified and works really well. If you guys want to check out Clean Fuego, use my code DANSON for 10% off. Go check out their stuff. We've been rocking their merch all trip. Their stickers are dope, their merch is dope, and their product is one of the best on the market, especially for pitchers. So once again, thank you so much to Clean Fuego for helping us out with this trip, man. I can't like I can't stress enough how helpful they've been. So hopefully you guys enjoy the episode. Let's go. Hit a pen out the right field. In the layout on a Eddie. high drive down the right field line. Hooking toward the corner. Belly. And it Stay is money. gone. Perry. I shoot droppers. Call me Larry. And it ain't young. I need a Navy. Don't need a sponsor. Hurry He's heavy. got two outs. Look out. Gonzalez to right. All right, guys, so we have kind of a bonus episode today with Luis Gonzalez of the San Francisco Giants. So it's kind of crazy how we're set up right now. It's just in like a weird location. We're in the middle. Like we're, we're in El Segundo. El Segundo. Well, I've never been here before. And we're with Luis. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, kind of a crazy setup, like I said. Funny backstory. But let's just get right into it. So first thing is, where are you from and what's kind of your story? Um, I'm originally from Mexico, born and raised in uh, Hermosillo, Sonora. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to Tucson, Arizona when I was like nine years old. I was just starting like first uh, or ending first grade, second grade. So, yeah. So how, what was it like going from Mexico? Did you speak English in Mexico? No. You didn't, so you just no. went straight into America? Yeah, and... straight into America. I had, you know, me and my sister, we, we had a little bit of time to prepare, you know, a couple of months before we got into the States, but no, we didn't know a lick of a lick of English. So did you start playing baseball in Mexico though? You were playing down there? Yeah. So what was it like going from Mexican baseball to American baseball at that age? Like, was it just different? Like, was it hard to um, like, you know, communicate with people and, and, you know, get used to that? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was hard to communicate, you know, cause you don't know the language, but you know, you're playing a sport together. So you're kind of like building a bond with each other and you're not even speaking with each mm -hmm. other, you know? So it was, it was pretty cool to, to experience that and to like look back on that and like the relationships that I've made because of of the sport that I play, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's been cool. So when did you know growing up, like 15, 16, 17, when did you know you could be like a big leaguer and what was that moment for you? Yeah, I mean, I probably, I had um, um, uh, aspirations since I was really young, you know, to become a big leaguer. So I think, you know, when I was probably like, like 14 years old and getting into high school where I really like started taking it, you know, a lot serious with my, with my grades and stuff so I can pass all my classes and, and, and have uh, colleges look at me, you know, to take, to take it to the next level. So, yeah. so yeah, it was, um, it was early in my, my middle school and high school career yeah. where I was kind of like, I need to buckle down here and, sure. and start. What was your decision to go to New Mexico? I'm sure you were pretty highly recruited. So why did you choose New Mexico? And what was your um, choice going into that? One of them was it, it was close from home. Mm. So it was six hours away. So I could, you know, uh, ride back to uh, Tucson on the brakes and stuff. So that made it nice. And you know, obviously a uh, uh, full scholarship helps too. Sure. So yeah. um that was another reason, and but Ray Birmingham honestly was one of the main reasons as well. Is um, I, I heard a lot of great things uh, as a hitting coach from him, and as just a manager. So um, yeah, I was uh, looking forward to getting to work with him. Yeah. So what was it like getting drafted out of college? So, did, so you did three years of college and then got drafted. Yeah. So what was that? When did you know you were going to be like uh, kind of a high round pick? And, and what was your what was that night like for you when you first got drafted? Um, I mean, I'd probably say like after my sophomore year. I batted like 384 or 382 with uh, like six homers. So, you know, I, I was catching the eyes of scouts and um, putting my, my name on the on the radar. So so by if I, I knew if I had another junior, a good junior year, then I could uh, potentially get taken pretty high. Yeah. So. Um, so, yeah, just um, the, the second question was. Um, oh, when did you know you were going to? Oh, so. Oh, the night of. Yeah, yeah, the drafted. night you got drafted. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I had all my friends. A couple of my friends and some family at my house. So, uh, yeah, we were just kind of watching it together. And 
And when it happened, you know, we all celebrated yeah. and went out to eat. Yeah. And that was like a moment that I'll, I'll never forget. Yeah, I just had a bunch of buddies drafted, and it's just like so cool seeing because yeah. they're like my age, and it's just so yeah. like their dream is coming true. And it seems pretty surreal. A lot of guys are yeah. like, "How did I get here?" Like a year ago, they couldn't even have expected like where they are today. Right. Um, but on that note, so you're a rookie this year, or this, you had you made your big league. Well, you made your debut in 2020, right? But yeah. you're technically a rookie this yeah. year, and you won NL Rookie of the Month in yep. May, right? Uh -huh. So what was that like? And how'd you know? Like, you know, what, did you just get hot and you're like, "Oh, like this is a really good month for me"? Or were you not even thinking about that? Yeah, I know. Honestly. Yeah. You know, I, um, I, you could say I was hot, you know, obviously because I won the rookie of the year, but I felt like I wasn't always clicking in my in my cylinders. I think I could always done better. Yeah. But, you know, it was a great honor and a great experience to have won that. And, you know, that kind of gives me a, a lot of confidence as a young player and and to know that, you know, your work is is being is being looked at you know in a positive way it's 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 a good feeling yeah so your first big league home run was a big one right so it took the lead you took the lead against the brewers right it was the top of the ninth and you took the lead 4-2 i think it was a two-one home run gonzalez high drive down the right field line and it is gone his first big league home run puts the giants ahead four to two right so what was that moment like for you winning that first home run yeah, that was sick, you know, just like rounding bases and knowing that I just got my first major league. You corner. got all of it, too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was, yeah. Uh, you know, like that's a feeling that, you know, you can't describe. It's just surreal. But like I look back at that night and, you know, it was a lot of a lot of hard work that has come that has come to that to leading up to that moment. So, you know, I'm just um, grateful to to uh, to be able to. You know, showcase the ability. Yeah, and plus you hit a home run off Albert Pujols, which is just a funny sentence to say because it doesn't really make sense. So once again, what was that moment like for you? And was it just like, oh, this is just weird? Ninth, he's got two outs. Look out, Gonzalez to right. Albert looking at it. So is everyone else. Albert's given up a homer. So Gonzalez is in the game as a pitcher. He joins Otani as the only pitcher this year to homer. Like, yeah, <laughs> I think like. After the game where all the reporters, you know, came up to me after the game and were just like, hey, uh, what's cooler, uh, pitching, you're making your pitching debut or, hit, right, right, or hitting a homer that. off Albert Pujols? And I was just like, dang, that is, you know, that's a, pretty <laughs> that's a pretty wild night to think about, yeah. you know, making my pitching debut and then hitting a homer off Albert. So um, they were asking me what was cooler, and I was like, I think – probably uh pitching because it lasted longer yeah but you know looking back on it it was definitely hitting a home raw fowler pujols like it's just so cool i wish <laughs> i wish i could have gotten a picture with him after the mm -hmm. game and yeah. like shook his hand or something that's like that. that's so wild like yeah. just who would have thought it's such a funny just thing that happened and it was his first pitching uh appearance right right, ever. right. yeah so i think i was yeah i was the first one and joey bart was the last one yeah that's crazy yeah. well so, not the last one maybe i don't know if he's giving up another homer uh -huh. but so we have a lot of younger guys, even like 14 to 18 is our biggest like age audience that watches it, mostly baseball players. And they're going through like the recruiting process and trying to find what school fits for them. So what's your biggest advice for someone like 16 years old going through the recruiting process, trying to find the best fit for them? Yeah, I mean, like for me, um, a meeting with the coaches and, and and like just getting to know them and, and like kind of feeling them out and, and knowing like if they really want you at that school mm -hmm. and you know, sometimes it's nicer to go to a school where they want you rather than like a big, a big name school that you might not get any playing time in. And, and you, you know, you won't you won't get any playing time. So no one's going to see you play. So go somewhere where, you know, that school really likes you, where they where, you know, you're going to get some playing time and then, you know, just ride from there. Yeah. yeah. Also. So like I said, we have a lot of younger guys watching. So what's your biggest advice for someone who wants to be like you one day and kind of take the steps that they take and be successful and whatever they maybe not even baseball, just be successful in their career. What's your biggest advice for them? My biggest advice is probably to just work hard, mm -hmm. you know, um, have have this drive, have this passion for the game or whatever it is that you do. Um, that's something that's that's always helped me out. You know, I I love what I do, mm -hmm. so I, I wake up every day happy to to go out and run and, and go lift and do all those baseball activities to to get better. Yeah. So, you know, um, sometimes it's it's um, it's how you work when nobody's watching. Yeah. You know, you got to get those extra hours in in the gym or in the field or you know whoever can throw you grounders or hit you fly balls like do it you know like whatever whatever ways you can to uh to get better at is take advantage and, and try and do that you know it'll it'll pay off in the end yeah thank you man so what yeah. i got one more question for you what has been the most special moment in your career so far and then to pivot off that 
What actually? I'll ask that one first. What's the most special moment that's happened in your career so far, just in baseball? Like all together, would probably be winning Rookie of the Month yeah. for May. Yeah. Um, that mean that's probably been up there, but you know, just like hitting my whole first homer as well. But you know, just this whole experience has been so cool. So I'm just like soaking it all in. Yeah. Right I bet yeah. It's, is it pretty surreal for you just to be where you are right now? Yeah. And, yeah. 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 So what's it like playing in San Francisco? Oh, I love San Francisco. I mean. Other than the wind and, and the chilliness a little bit, like, I love it. The fans are great. Oracle Park is so beautiful. And and being from a guy from Arizona, you know, uh, playing in California, you're close to home. So, yeah. you know, something that I always dreamed of. I was a big Barry Bonds fan growing up, so I watched a lot of a lot of games of him. So I watched, I watched a lot of games in uh, San Francisco games, so playing there is just – makes it makes it very special awesome yeah so we'll, last question now what's your biggest advice for just in general for someone which if you could go back and tell your 12 year old self one thing or 13 year old self one thing what would it be no i mean i just i tell them to be themselves yeah you know it's um some people a lot of young kids uh get away from being who they are you know um um you got to stick to to who you are and have a plan and know that you know your plan is not always going to be um, in the same, like, you're not, people work at different rates, you know, um, you might be like, you know, you could be 12 year or uh, 21 years old and make your major league debut, or you could be 28 years old and make your major league year debut, yeah. but you know, you still have like a good career going right. on. So don't focus on what other people think and just continue to do you and focus on your craft and focus on your journey. And, you know, don't, don't, don't worry about others and, and what other people think about you. Love it. That's a great spot yeah. to end. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Hit a pen, I pull up heavy. In the layout, on a Eddie. I got three of us, run the valley. In New Dios, not for belly. Stay that money, I for Perry. I shoot jumpers, call me Larry. Then they need Yonkers, they need a Navy. Don't need a sponsor, hurry to heaven. They calling me the main head to slow down. I done bought too many chains. So I rode by the engine a minute.